benefits of dhikr. Of the benefits of dhikr is that dhikr causes one to develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A door of conversation is opened up. The one who does dhikr constantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of this person, a special awareness. That person's dua has a higher chance of being answered. That person's religiosity, spirituality, protection from the angels, protection by the angels and against shaitan, all of this increases as his dhikr increases. Of the blessings of dhikr that is mentioned in the Quran explicitly, is that dhikr brings about a peace of the heart. It brings about a comfort to the qalb. When the qalb, when the heart is feeling worried, when the heart is feeling troubled, and wallahi, all of us, our hearts feel troubled at times. We all face problems. We all have crises. Every human being faces family problems. Every human being faces financial issues. Every human being has to face the politics of society, the office politics. It's human nature. You're not alone. Don't ever think you're alone. Everybody has to do it. What is one of the ways we can get out of this box? Allah Azza wa Jal clearly mentions in the Quran that one of the ways out to feel the spiritual happiness is through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Whoever turns away from my dhikr, that is the person that shall live a miserable life. Which means what? If you don't turn away from dhikr, if you immerse yourself in dhikr, what's going to happen? That is the person that will live a sweet life. The one who lives a miserable life, ma'ishatan dhanka, which means every problem becomes even more problematic. The smallest issue becomes even bigger. Why? Because this person never thinks of Allah, never remembers Allah, never glorifies Allah. And the one who thinks of Allah and glorifies Allah, his problems become small for him. Brothers and sisters, when you say Allahu Akbar and you mean it, how can any problem of this dunya be kabir for you, be big for you? When you say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the most important. He is the grandest, the greatest, the most majestic. And you say Allahu Akbar, how can any problem of this world be kabir for you? Simply by remembering Allah and doing dhikr of Allah, your problems, they're not going to disappear. But your pain because of those problems, yes, wallahi, that will disappear. The suffering that the heart has because of those problems will become minimized until finally it will disappear. And this is the reality that the Quran and Sunnah clearly mentions. In fact, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to the Sahaba right before they're about to go into battle. When they were on the battlefield, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses in the Quran that when the enemy is coming, فَثْبُتُوا وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Remain firm, don't turn around and run away. And what do you do to arm yourself when there's one of you and ten of them? When they're double, triple your number? When they're better armed than you? When they have better weapons than you? What weapon will you use against them? Allah says, فَثْبُتُوا Stay where you are, don't turn around. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Do constant dhikr and you will be victorious. Amazing. The weapon on the battlefield for the Sahaba, after they were told to remain firm physically, because you're not going to turn around, run away, and then miracles are going to happen. You want the miracle to happen, take all necessary precautions, and then do dhikr. Do dhikr as much as you can. And Allah Azza wa clearly says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Of the blessings of dhikr, is that dhikr brings about a peace in the grave. It brings about comfort in the grave. It brings about a good death and a good grave abode, place in the grave. We learn from the traditions that our Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ كَانَ آخِرَ كَلَامِهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever's last phrase was La ilaha illallah, that is the person who will enter Jannah. And Allah says in the Quran, Inna الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ استقاموا. Those who said Allah is our Rabb, then they were firm in saying this. That is the one, when that person dies, the angels will come down and say, don't worry, don't grieve, we are your friends, we are your helpers, we will take care of you. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ so how did this person get a good death? How did this person get into Jannah? He said, Allah is my Lord. And he said, La ilaha illallah at the time of death. 
Of course, we cannot guarantee that any of us will say La ilaha illallah at the time of death. We hope so, we pray so. Oh Allah, we ask that you make our last breath La ilaha illallah in this world. We hope and pray so. But what is the best way we can guarantee to make the kalima our last phrase? Obviously, by repeating the kalima while we are alive as much as we can. So that when the time of death comes, automatically, instantaneously, our fitra kicks in, our habit kicks in, and we say the phrase that we were accustomed to saying dozens of times a day. When we see the angel of death, instead of astaghfirullah, saying an expletive, a curse word, which is what some people do, we will say, La ilaha illallah. Because we have conditioned ourselves. We have made it a habit, a routine of always doing dhikr. And so at the very end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us by allowing us to continue to do that dhikr. As well, dhikr protects us on the day of judgment itself. On the day of judgment. In the famous hadith that all of you uh, have heard, all of you have heard so many times, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, seven are the people. Seven are the people that Allah will shelter under His shelter when there is no shelter other than His shelter. Seven are the people that will be shaded under the throne of Allah. One of those seven is what? Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliyan fafadat aina. It was a person who did dhikr of Allah. Dhakar Allah. And nobody was looking at him. He wasn't showing off. He, was, he did it when nobody was looking at him. And he was overwhelmed with emotion. And he began to cry. This is one of the seven people that his dhikr was so pure coming from the qalb, spiritual dhikr, that he was so overcome with emotion that he began to cry out of the love of Allah, out of the fear of Allah, out of the hope of Allah. Tears began to come down and nobody's looking at him. So this is quality dhikr. What has caused this person to be raised up to the ranks of being one of the seven who is sheltered under the throne? Quality dhikr. Dhikr coming straight from the heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him to be of those who are sheltered and saved. Of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr is the purpose of all of the other ibadat and rituals. And that is why Allah links it to Hajj, and Allah links it to Ramadan, and Allah links it to prayer. Every single ritual is linked to dhikr. Dhikr is in fact the reason why we are doing all of the other rituals. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ The reason why we pray is to establish the dhikr of Allah. What a noble goal. What goal can be more noble than this? Than the reason for prayer, the reason for hajj, the reason for every single ritual is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked even the salah. And of course the Quran links the hajj and the Quran links the siyam. Even the Quran itself is called dhikr. One of the names of the Quran is dhikr. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ dhikr. The name of the Quran is dhikr. Because the whole purpose of the Qur'an, the Sharia, the Salah, the Hajj is what? To praise Allah, to glorify Allah. And so, what greater goal is there than the goal of dhikr? Of the blessings and benefits of dhikr is that dhikr is something that protects one from Jahannam. Our Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmad that there is nothing that a man can do that is more helpful to save him from Naru Jahannam than the dhikr of Allah. Nothing that you can do that is more guaranteed to save you from Jahannam than the dhikr of Allah. And our scholars have commented and said, how can Allah throw into the fire the one whose tongue was constantly removing in his praise? How can Allah punish the heart that was always remembering him? No matter what the sins were, this is a man always turning to Allah, always praising Allah, always saying, Alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, how can this person be thrown into Jahannam? So our Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَنْجَى مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Nothing is going to save you more from the adab of Allah than the dhikr of Allah. And it's common sense. Wallahi, it's common sense. If your spouse commits some mistakes, but they're always showing they love you. They're always demonstrating that love. You will be more open to forgiving. Versus the spouse who doesn't show any love, then commits mistakes. Similarly, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the perfect example. How is the example of the one who is always praising Allah, always doing dhikr, and he's also committing sins? 
this person has a far greater chance of forgiveness simply because his qalb has some attachment with Allah. He's showing some guilt, some sign of life, some resuscitation that he's calling out to Allah, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr is of the heaviest things in the scales on the day of judgment. The last hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the first is in amal bin niyad the last hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari is kalimatani, khafifatani ala lisani thaqilatani fil mizani, habibatani ila rahmani subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Two are the phrases. They are so light on the tongue, yet so heavy in the scales, and so beloved to ar-Rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hadith is in Sahih Muslim, Walhamdulillahi tamla'u al-mizan. Saying Alhamdulillah, it fills the scale on the Day of Judgment. One Alhamdulillah from the heart, it fills the scale. Of the blessings of dhikr, dhikr is that deed, that ritual, that act of worship. You can do it at any time, and any place, and any circumstance, without exception. You can do dhikr in wudu outside of wudu, in janaba outside of janaba. Women can do dhikr in their cycle outside of their cycle. You can do dhikr facing the qibla on your back, wherever you are, whichever state you're in. You can do dhikr waiting in traffic, waiting for the meeting to start. Nothing has to, there's no preconditions in any state that you are. Even in the state of janaba, Aisha herself says that the Prophet ﷺ would do dhikr of Allah. He would do dhikr of Allah fi kulli ahyanihi. In all of the states he was in. And the reference is very clear. Whether he had done ghusl or not, he could do dhikr. So dhikr does not require you to have wudu, to be in the state. No. Any state you are in, any direction you're facing, any posture you're in, you can do dhikr of Allah. So the rewards are so great and the ease of doing it is so accessible. There's hardly any deed that is easier to do and yet more rewarded than the dhikr of Allah. And this is of the blessings of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the blessings of dhikr, of the blessings of dhikr is that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, somebody asked him, what is the most blessed and noble of all deeds? Like what's the best I can do? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held on to his tongue and he said, make sure that your tongue is constantly moving in the dhikr of Allah. Make sure that your tongue is constantly moving in the dhikr of Allah. That's the best you can do. There's nothing, there's no level higher than that. Of the blessings of dhikr is that dhikr beautifies your place in Jannah. Dhikr beautifies your place in Jannah. In a very profound, elegant Beautiful hadith. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when I went up to Isra wal Mi'raj, I met my father Ibrahim. I met my father Ibrahim. And Ibrahim said to me, Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aqri ummataka minni salam. Give my salams to your ummah. So the Prophet Ibrahim is giving his salams to us through his son, his descendant, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhbirhum. And go tell them that Jannah is Taiba to Turba. It is fertile soil, beautiful soil. But it is flat without any trees in it. This is a strange hadith because that's not our vision of Jannah. The soil is great, but there's flat land, no trees. Qi'an means there's no, you don't see anything. It's just a flat land. How can it be Jannah? When there's no gardens in Jannah. Where are the fruits? Where are the vegetables? Where are the date palms? Ibrahim alayhi salam went on. وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ And inform them. أَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا That the seedlings that you're going to have to plant in your plot of Jannah. غِرَاسَ is the seedling. It's already grown. Guaranteed to grow. It's going to grow. It's already there. It's already sprouted out. You know when you go and you buy the trees already small. This is the غِرَاسَ. It's already there. غِرَاسَهَا وَأَنَّ غِرَاسَهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ These are the seedlings of Jannah. These are the trees of Jannah. سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ So, you want your plot of Jannah to be fertile? You want your plot of Jannah to be beautiful, luscious, luxurious, green? You want to have lots of Jannat in Jannah? 
every time you say subhanallah, one more tree. Alhamdulillah, one more tree. Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Any dhikr that you do, that will be planted in this fertile soil. Indeed, Jannah is barren, but that's why we're doing our good deeds. The purpose of our good deeds is to plot those seeds in Jannah. And the greatest seeds to plot, the most fertile trees, will be the trees that come from dhikr. And this is what Ibrahim alayhi salam is telling our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Brothers and sisters, much can be said about dhikr. And in fact, Ibn al-Qayyim, the fam famous student of Ibn Taymiyyah, he wrote a book, uh, Al-Wabil al-Sayyib, in which he compiled 105 blessings of dhikr from the Quran and Sunnah. Literally, one after the other. That from its blessings, number one, and number two, and number three. And he keeps on going on and on and on. More than 100 blessings, specific and unique to the concept of dhikr. And indeed, one khutbah cannot summarize all of that. But one simple verse in the Quran summarizes really the essence of dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Four words. Verily, through the dhikr of Allah does the heart find peace. Through the dhikr of Allah does the heart find its tranquility. There is no peace. There is no tranquility without the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only through the dhikr of Allah will we find peace in this world and the next.